Hi there! Welcome to MCSI. My name is Anna. In this video, I will demonstrate how you can investigate malicious disk image files. First, let's talk about what disk image files are. A disk image file holds the entire contents of storage media like a CD or a DVD. The file exists in ISO or IMG format. Disk image files are designed to act as an archive for a large number of files. They may contain operating system images or multimedia files. In most cases, the size of disk image files is few gigabytes. Let's talk about a scenario where a malicious disk image file was used to spread malware. On November 9th, Jake received an email from the accounting department of a company he is working with. The email appears to have an attachment regarding a payment. The attachment has the extension IMG. At first glance, the name and extension of the attachment indicates that it is a picture. However, picture files typically have the extension JPEG, PNG, or GIF. IMG is the extension used by disk image files. Why would someone send payment information in a disk image file when it can simply be sent as a PDF document or an image? This is suspicious. I will demonstrate how this suspicious disk image file can be investigated. This is the file that Jake received as the attachment. Windows has identified it as a disk image file, which is just 58 kilobytes in size. Typically, the size of disk image files are in the gigabytes range. It is rather strange to see such a small file. Let's look into this. When I double-click this file, Windows automatically mounts it. It appears that there is an executable within this disk image. The email indicated that payment information was sent. Finding a binary here is quite unexpected. We will analyze this suspicious executable in our malware analysis lab. If you want to know how to set up your own malware analysis lab, we have another video in our channel for you to follow along with. You will find the link to it in the description box below. I have already taken the required snapshots of my virtual machine. We will start off with static analysis of the sample. We will utilize PE Studio to get some quick information. We can see various information about this PE file like its hashes, header, sections, imports, resources, and strings. For now, we will take a look at the imports and string sections. Import section denotes the functions that have been imported from the libraries mentioned for the executable to run. These libraries contain functions designed to be used by Windows legitimately. Cyber adversaries misuse legitimate functions with malicious intent. PE Studio has identified and flagged some imports as suspicious. We can confirm whether these imports are malicious or not by reverse engineering the executable completely. For now we can say that the utilization of web request and web response imports by a file that claims to provide payment information is rather odd. Within the string section, we can see that there is a link to a JPEG file stored in a server. We can also see keywords like run, load, and create. It could be part of the executable's code. Again, we will know more about this capability when this sample is reverse engineered. Next, we will perform dynamic analysis. The tools we will utilize are RigShot, Process Monitor, and Wireshark. First, I will take a shot of the current state of the registry on this machine. The file is saved in a network drive. During an investigation, it is a good practice to store any data or files recovered from the target machine in external storage media or in network drives. This is to minimize interaction with the target machine. After some time, the first shot has been taken successfully. Next, I will start Process Monitor and ensure that events are getting captured. Wireshark is also capturing packets on the Ethernet interface. Now the sample can be executed. I will let the sample proceed with its activity for some time. Now, let us take the second shot of the registry and store it in the same location. The second shot has been collected successfully. Let us compare the registry shots taken before and after the sample was executed. 
we can get information about registry keys and values that were created, deleted, or modified. This information can be processed to get insight into whether the suspicious binary has made these changes. Now, in Process Monitor, let us filter to view only the events of the file we just executed. We will create a filter and apply it to the events display. We can see all the operations that have taken place as soon as the execution began. When the binary was executed, a prefetch file would have been created for it. You can also investigate this prefetch file. We have another video walking you through this process. You will find the link to it in the description box below. Then you can find entries denoting registry activity. Scrolling through, we can find entries indicating network activity. Let's head over to Wireshark to get more information about it. We can see that our machine has initiated a TCP connection with this IP address. The TCP handshake has been completed successfully. And a request is placed for a JPEG file. This IP address and file name was observed within the URL in the string section in PE Studio. Let us follow this TCP stream to see what data was exchanged in this interaction. It appears that our machine has been making requests to the foreign IP for a JPEG file, but the file does not exist on the server anymore. VirusTotal has also identified the sample to be malicious. Here is a quick overview of what we did so far. Jake received an email claiming to provide payment information in an attachment. Although it appeared to be an image file, it was actually a disk image file with an executable. The executable connects to a foreign IP, requesting a JPEG file. This preliminary information can be documented and provided to the reverse engineering team to uncover the complete behavior of the executable. This is a recent trend where cyber criminals weaponize disk image files to spread malware. If you liked this video, please hit like and share this video on social media. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive more videos like this one. Join our online community of students learning useful cybersecurity skills if you haven't already. To register for a free account right away, go to our website. Happy learning and see you soon!